Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here today to give you a little bit of a tutorial and review of what has been an indispensable bit of software over the years for me. And that is what used to be called Alien Skin Exposure. Now they have rebranded the company and they use Exposure as their headline. And so they're now Exposure Software. So I started using Alien Skin Exposure, I think at version two, and this is going back now probably nine, 10 years ago. Started using it long before I was anything in the photography industry, and I've continued to use it over the years. I've developed a lot of presets that I like in it. I've you know enjoyed the workflow along the way. And I would say that probably 95% of the images that I share on social media or images that I've actually worked in post-processing, there is at least one step that has gone through exposure along the way. Because I'm familiar with how it works and because it works so well that there are very, very few images that I don't feel like I can improve at least a little bit by running it through exposure. Now, I primarily, because I started off using it as a plugin, that's been the primary way that I have used it. However, at this point, Exposure has evolved into becoming a full standalone library module and editor that you can use as a Lightroom alternative if you don't want to go on the subscription model. So today, we're going to uh, jump in and give you a little bit of a demonstration on how that library module works and how you can tweak that uh, quickly that. But then I also want to dive into all of those wonderful presets because therein lies what I think is the real advantage over Lightroom, for example, is that, that at this point, Exposure has a massive amount of really fantastic presets, everything from film emulations, but also adding in different kinds of light leaks and effects. And there's just a, a huge amount of inherited strength from this being their focus now for at least 10 years. So let's jump in and let's take a little look at this piece of software that I continue to find one of my very favorites in my workflow. So first of all, Exposure has a full library module, and so it can be used as a standalone piece of software with all of the metadata type work. And also, as you can see, you can either get your images off of your, your camera card, your computer drive, or even if you wanna use a, a Lightroom catalog, you can actually import or migrate your catalog to Exposure. So in this case, I've just selected a specific folder as you know, in my catalog, I have massive, massive amounts of, of photos from over the years and doing so many reviews. So like Lightroom, you have the option of creating collections. You can sort things here. You've got various uh, things in your navigator, histogram, folders, and then of course the ability to start editing right from this area. You have the, also the option of you know, choosing what kind of file size you like to use. And there are a lot of options for um, editing your metadata and, or if you want to go right into just, you know, the actual editing process, you can jump right into that at any point. So if I double click on any of the files there in the timeline, I can bring that up and expand that and so that I can start my editing process. Left side, I've got presets, lots of options there. So once we go to editing, um, basically all of these same kind of tools that are available um, in Lightroom are available here in Exposure as well. Um, and so you've got a lot of editing options here. You also have the ability in this to add in LUTs, which is something that's not currently available or lookup tables for a specific look, something not available in Lightroom at the moment. But you also have the ability, because you have some layering capability, you have the ability to um, use overlays here and um, so you know in this case you know some of my you just give you an example one of my presets that I've, I've developed here as you can see if we look back at the before you can see and we'll come back to this in a moment but you can see that I have added a bit of a, a light leak and you see so you got some control over that and so it's given an image this is one of the presets that I, I often use because I really like this effect but you have the ability to add in textures light effects you know borders if that's your thing and so a lot of options there now under the focus tab you can not only do sharpening but you can also do kind of specific sharpening and so um, you can also add in some blurred portions of the image you can uh, you choose where you're targeting that area and and so there's a lot of options on how you control that you have a lot more options than you do with um, Lightroom for adding in different kinds of grain because there are a lot of film emulations that exposure has long been famous for 
There's also some more kind of processing effects where you've got options of doing things like, uh, say here, where you can add in some you know, inf infrared, and obviously on a portrait, this is not really going to be the thing so much, but you have some options there on how you handle this and create some specific looks. And as you can see, as you hover over things, there's real time. They've also got some interesting options when it comes to adding bokeh and so affecting blur in areas. And so you can do, you know, the radial filters. You can also use like planar type filters, half planar. And so you can, you know, kind of set up where that effect's going to be. They've also now got a tremendous amount of options in here when it comes to what lens that you are using. And so, um, so you've got lens correction profiles that can be there and you, you have options for what's going to be corrected there as a part of that. Now under the defringe, you have a little bit more flexibility on than what you do in Lightroom and going after uh, color fringing in that you've got, uh, you can actually add in a huge variety of colors. You also have some options on how you're going to handle that. And then down here, you have the metadata that you can go through and you can take care of all of the metadata information. And so you've got a lot of options right there. And of course, the unique uh, editing capability here is you also have the option of adding on layers. And then you have, uh, you know, you have options when it comes to uh, like spot correction, but then you have a full amount of options when it comes to adding either brushing or adding gradients. And so you've got a lot of now physical controls over how you're going to apply your edits. And so just as a standalone editor, it has a lot of functionality and is certainly a valid option to something like Lightroom in that, and also you can own it outright. Now, in addition, exposure can be run as a plugin from either Lightroom, Photoshop, and I believe a few other pieces of editing software. And so in this case, we're looking at the same image. Um, but in this case, you know, if I'm looking to mostly handle this from a preset, which is the way that for many years I, I used light or, or excuse me, I used exposure long before they had any um, it, they had any kind of standalone capability back when it was only a plugin. And so that's kind of been my workflow over the years. So as a result, as you're looking in the preset, and so right now we'll just kind of focus simply on that, that point of view, there are just huge amounts of, of presets that are there. And a lot of these are ones that, you know, I've created myself, as you can see where it says upgraded. And these are ones that I've developed back in earlier categories. Now, if I go to their own set of um, actual presets, so example under color, you've got a lot of options for, you know, these are just like aperture type effects. And so, you know, if you want to adding in some, you know, different looks and you can see there's, there's huge amounts of, of options that are there as a part of that. Um, under the bright, you've got all kinds of, you know, some of these presets um, can, you know, really, really alter the look. And so a lot of those type options under cinema, you've got some of the, the classic film kind of looks. And so these are emulations that are based on, you know, some very popular uh, f films. I mean, so some work more than others, but remember with all of these, you have the ability to control the intensity of it. And so um, there's just, I, I really like the way that their whole process works. Now, beyond that, you've also got some classic films, you know, so for example, lots of options under Polaroid and in some of the classic looks that come from that, you've got um, some of the films that, you know, maybe even have a little bit of roughness attached to them if that's a kind of a look that you're going for. There are a lot of classic slide emulations. So some of, if you have, you know, different looks that you really love from times past, for your slides, you've got the option of using that. So as you can see, there's just, there's at this point, there are just tons and tons of different presets here, plus the ability to take any of these to tweak them and then to save them as your own, which, you know, is what I've done. I've customized a lot of them. There's even a uh, Fuji camera emulations here. And so, you know, you've got options for different Fuji looks that are going to affect the image. And so on and on it goes, there are a lot of, of different options here, you know, some with you know, adding in light leaks. So, I mean, you have the ability to add a click, create a ton of different looks. Now, beyond that, if you move on to the black and white tab, you have a huge host of different options with different grain looks, different, uh, you know, just completely different kinds of of looks and beyond that, of course, you can tweak any of these 
further in post. Um, you've got under the low contrast category. You've got a, just a ton of film emulations. And as you can see, looking at all of these, you've got a huge amount of different options on how to handle this. You've got split toning options. And uh, you know beyond that, let's just say that we chose one of those split tone. But beyond here, you've also got different options on filtering each one of these to create different kinds of looks to emphasize different colors. And so, I mean, you just using the presets, split toning, there is just, I've always found that there is a massive amount of flexibility in how you handle uh, things like split toning. You've got a lot of options for vintage films. Let's say you're wanting to create a particular look for a poster or some project. And so, I mean, just the, the amount of options you have is, is pretty much endless here and that's just in the presets alone then if you add on the other effects everything from borders to light leaks i mean you have you truly have options to create quickly and easily pretty much any kind of look that you want and then if you settle on something you like you can control the intensity of it and then you can also go through and tweak it you can layer on presets and at the end of the day let's just take a close look here at what i have done and so you can look at the before, and by the way, in your, your layout, you can actually go into the spotlight where you can drag different preset looks here to see you know, which you like. And so if you're kind of narrowing it down to your, you know, your final option, but you have the option of looking at your before and after. And as you can see, I've added kind of a warm glow to this image that I like. It's, um, it's, you know, it's not impacted my skin tones in a negative way. Detail looks great. And so if you settle on something you like, you can then you know, click apply and away you go. Now, if you're familiar with, you know, actually I almost always launch exposure from Photoshop. And uh, the reason for that is that Photoshop, then of course you have the option of further playing with layers and all of the Photoshop type tools to really get the look that you want. And so as a byproduct of that, I find that there are very, very few images that I don't feel that I can improve by uh, using exposure. And so as you can see, it's a simple piece of software to work. In fact, if you're, you're familiar at all with Lightroom, I think you'll very, very quickly pick up on it. But even if you're not, um, it has so much capabilities and it adds some things that Lightroom doesn't have. It's a little bit of a hybrid of Lightroom and Photoshop, but then also, of course, with that rich catalog of presets to draw from. So there's actually a whole lot of value involved here. Um, you can either buy the standalone software, it's $119 or an $89 upgrade, but if you use the code Dustin Abbott um, at checkout, you can get 10% off that. That code also applies to the full bundle, and they also, you can buy one with Exposure X5, version 5, SnapArt, and their Blowup plugins. Blowup allows you to um, have a very clever resizing if you need to do very large prints, and then uh, SnapArt is, it's a way of kind of giving you a, a painterly look and it's something that I've played with a lot and it sometimes works out really well if you're creating like canvases or things like that and so uh, it's an interesting piece of software to play with as well but obviously a lot of value when you look at you know that is a once you've, you've paid that, you've gotten the whole whole program and you own it in perpetuity. And so, and then they're pretty good about updating it along the way. And as you can see, if they do upgrade in the future, you get a discounted upgrade path if you want to do that. So take a look at it. I'll throw a link here that you can explore and look at. I'm Dustin Abbott. Look in the description down below for that linkage information. Also, opportunities to follow me on social media, uh, to become a patron, or to sign up for my newsletter. And if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button right here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.